Welcome back. It's uh, episode four already. The year is flying by. In episode three, having just fished the opening weekend on my Lincoln Syndicate, it was really good to, to get back on the lake and catch a couple of fish and my mojo was well and truly back. I'd been going through a bit of a bad time, I weren't really feeling it uh, and the start of the new season on the, on the Lincoln Lake just kicked me back into action. Um, and since then I've been really, really enjoying my fishing and uh, yeah, I've had a few really good results to share with you. So, as you can imagine, I was itching to get back on the Lincoln Syndicate, having had those couple of fish on the opening weekend. So what I did was I booked a day's holiday, and I also planned to do a day's working on the bank with my laptop and a leisure battery, so that I could string together a four-night session the following week. This meant that I'd booked a first year's holiday, and I was gonna work the Friday. Um, so I had Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and the Saturday night at my disposal. I've been keeping an eye on the weather and a new fresh westerly wind was forecast to be blowing. And when there's a westerly wind blowing on that lake, there's two swims that you want to be in. You've got one called the slopes and one called the doubles. They're next door to each other and they both take that wind. Uh, and they both can be very good when there's a big westerly, southwesterly or northwesterly blowing. So I got down on the Wednesday. Unfortunately, my first choice, which was the slope swim, that was taken but the doubles next door to it was free. So I dropped my unhooking mat and my landing net into that peg, and then I went and got the barrel loaded. I've got all my gear set up, and I set about finding a spot where I could fish all three rods on. Even though I'd fished this swim quite a few times in the past and had, had spots saved in my swim mapper, they were all silt spots. And the last couple of times I'd fished the swim, I hadn't caught fish and I brought in a lot of black, horrible stuff off those spots. So I decided I was going to try and find a nice hard gravel spot to fish and I knew there was quite a few in that swim at a bit shorter range. So a bit of work with the plumbing rod, located a lovely spot at 19 wraps, rock hard gravel. So I popped the float up, got into the boat and I've gone and uh, dispatched about 13 kilos of bait. That was triple X boilies that I've been soaking in liquid uh, GLM, some pellets, some maize, some sweet corn and some hemp. Spread it all around the float, uh, quite a wide spread, and then I've come back to the uh, bank, wrapped all three of my fishing rods up to 19 wraps, and put all three rigs on that baited area. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting a quick bite. When you put in 13 kilos of bait, when it's all bits and pieces like that, there's a lot of food for the fish to eat. So I was expecting it to maybe take a bit of time. It was no surprise when I woke up on Thursday morning, hadn't received a bite. That part of the lake is generally a day area anyway. Um, unfortunately, I had to reel in at eight o'clock that morning because I was having to travel back to where I live um, to visit solicitors. I'm sorting out wills and stuff like that with Abby. So we had to uh, get all that boring paperwork done. So it meant I was away from the lake for three or four hours. Got back to the lake and I hoped that the fact there was no lines out on that bait for a few hours, maybe the fish had started to come in and have a bit of a feed with no lines in the water and they'd get their confidence up. Um, so the rods went back out. Uh, the conditions were epic. Big westerly wind hammering into it uh, and it just felt really good. Gets to about four o'clock. I've not had anything. I was actually on the phone to Mozza and uh, I, I was just sort of bemoaning my luck to him saying, I can't believe I've not had a bite. The conditions are so good. Um, and as I was doing that, I just heard in the, in the background one of my rods absolutely ripping off. Um, so I threw Mozza on the floor. <laughs> uh, not quite literally. Um, I went and uh, did battle with my first fish of the session. Uh, that turned out to be a, a 24 pound mirror, one of, the, uh, one of the Simo strain that are in this lake. Um, give a real good scrap, got the old heart beating and it was great to be off the mark. Uh, that bite actually came on the washed out pink, uh, a candy floss uh, pop-up 
that uh, Kodak from Kodapops had actually sent me the week before. He, uh, he sent me them up and I thought, you know what, I'll put them out on one rod, give them a go. So thanks for that Kodak, you helped me catch that fish. With that fish photographed, put back, put the rod back out and uh, I sort of expected a few, few more bites. Unfortunately, the evening uh, passed with no more action. A few of the lads from the lake and the bailiffs ended up sort of descending on my swim that evening. We had a good social. Unfortunately, I got no uh, footage of that, sorry, but uh, I was a bit distracted by making cups of tea and, uh, and having a few laughs with people to remember to actually do some footage, so my bad. Um, but yeah, so the guys all drifted off and I think I got to bed around about midnight. Next uh, morning again, I've woke up, nothing, but that's not too unusual for that part of the lake. Like I say, it is a daytime area. Conditions were still spot on. Um, and I did think that, you know, there would be a chance um, as, as the afternoon sort of came on. I didn't actually have to wait anywhere near that, that long. About half six, I've received a take on my middle rod um, and I've landed an absolute beauty. By no means the biggest fish I'll ever catch at 21 pounds, but it was jet black, big scales on it, pink tips to its fins, a proper, proper nice mirror. Um, so I've photographed that, got that back, and I was debating whether or not to put the rod back out. I still had two rods on the spot. I thought there could be a chance of another bite, but I thought, no, I want it back out there. So I've, I've put it back out, clipped the bobbin on, and no word of a lie, 10 minutes later, that same rod's off again. And uh, yeah, I've banked another another uh, 20 pounder. Action's coming thick and fast. Literally just got the rod back out and it's away within five minutes with another 20 pounder. This one went 23 pound. Go for great, great scrap. Angry, looks like a male fish, really angry. Look at that. Fins up. Tails all bent, not happy at all. I am. Awesome. So right, I'm gonna get it back because uh, I've only got one rod in the water at the minute and I need to get more in. So I'm gonna take advantage of this feeding spell. So yeah, I think it got to about 12 o'clock at lunchtime and it was playing on my mind. I'd now had three bites off, the, off that bait and I hadn't put any additional bait in since the original 13 kilos that I'd put in at the start on the Wednesday evening. So I decided to use my lunch break, as it were, to put about six to 10 uh, large impact spots of bait, exactly the same mix as what I'd been uh, throwing in from the boat a couple of days before. Just top the area up, a bit of fresh, fresh scent in the water, uh, and a, you know, a bit of fresh bait out there, just in case there was not much left after having a few bites. Always a gamble putting a bit more bait in, because, you know, there could have been a pile of bait down and I could have just been adding to it. But I felt sure that if I'd had three bites, surely at least sort of six to 10 spots worth of it's been eaten to get those three bites. So I've done it about lunchtime, like I say, and that move seemed to have paid off because I think it was about four o'clock. I've received another bite, this time uh, the right hand rod again, I think it was. Um, I've had to, I've got the laptop on my lap at this stage. So you have to try and remember that you've got some expensive equipment and uh, whatnot so i couldn't throw that like i did to to mozza i've had to sort of make sure the laptop put down safely go to the rod and uh, and then yeah managed to uh, land my fourth one of the trip and that was actually my biggest of the trip when it went in the net i felt sure that was going to be my first 30 of the new season it was so broad over its back um, it actually went just under 30 29 something but it didn't really matter it was it's a lovely fish um, and again, sort of proof that, you know, that little tactic move to top up the area with a bit of fresh bait had paid off. And then unfortunately, um, I had to pack up on the Saturday. Originally, I'd forgotten that it was, uh, I had a wedding engagement to go to. So I, I had originally thought I had the Wednesday night, the Thursday night, the Friday night and the Saturday night. But as it turned out, as Abby reminded me, I didn't have Saturday night because I had my auntie's wedding reception to attend. So uh, I had to reel in about lunchtime on the Saturday um, and gone uh, do the old family engagements. But it had been a great session, four bites, four landed, um, 
And yeah, what a great start to the season it had been. On my first five nights, six fish from six bites. Um, I was really, really pleased with that. And again, as you can imagine, I was really eager to get back. Um, and it wasn't actually long before I did get back because uh, we had booked in to film an episode of guest sessions on that lake with Mark Bartlett. We'd been looking forward to it for over a year. We'd set the date a long time ago. Um, I'd got special permission from the owners for Mark to fish a 48 hour guest session on the lake. Um, and as you can imagine, he was buzzing to uh, try his sort of Oxford style tactics up in Lincolnshire on this lake. Now, unfortunately, we got a bit of bad luck because the 48 hours that we decided to do the filming turned out to be the hottest 48 hours this country had ever seen. <laughs> we had 39 degrees and at night time, I don't think it dropped below probably 25 degrees. It was not the best of conditions to go carp fishing, sadly. Um, that said, Mark actually got us off to a pretty good start on the, the, the first morning uh, or the second morning as it were, like the, after the first night. Um, he caught a, a really nice 36 pounder and we thought, you know what, we, we could actually do this. We could actually make a, a show even despite these, we these weather conditions. Um, but sadly, that proved to be the only bite. I fished two swims in two nights and trying to move swim in that weather was was torture to be honest with you um, but you have to put the effort in you know we're trying to catch fish to make a film um, but sadly the move didn't pay off for me Mark stayed where he where he was but he didn't have any more bites so we made the decision to to cancel the filming um, to make an episode of guest sessions you're looking at sort of half an hour 45 minutes with one fish and not a lot else to film going on you know there wasn't a, a, a lot to film because there was just it was just dead the lake was dead there wasn't much much going on we wouldn't have been able to get a, a, an episode that would have would have given you guys something entertaining to watch so we, just, we decided to can that film and instead Harry set about filming a tips based thing with Mark whilst Brad and I decided we'd film the links for episode three of the vlog which hopefully you've all watched by now um, and we also cracked on with some uh, product photography for those new products, which hopefully again you've seen by now. Um, we, we did that um, and then I think it was the Friday morning, I said to Brad, I'm going to move swims again. Brad, Harry and Bart, they were all going home that Friday afternoon back to their, back to their relative parts of the country, spend a weekend with their families and whatnot, whereas I had plan to stay on the lake and fish the weekend as well. Um, the weather conditions were forecast to be absolutely bang on. Sod's law, I think they call it. Two days we're filming, horrific weather. The two days that I was gonna carry on fishing after the filming, absolutely textbook conditions for the summer. So I've said to Brad, I need to get my gear into the slope swim. There's a train going past there. It's one of the uh, joys of being vivid up on this particular bank um, yeah so I've moved my gear to the slope swim that's one of the two swims that gets the southwest northwest westerly winds um, they were both free that one and the doubles which I'd fished the week before the slopes for me is the better of the two swims on a southwesterly so I decided I was going to fish there so before we started work that morning Brad and myself have moved all my gear up there got it set up um, and we've cracked on and got our work finished on the Friday with Brad and Bart and H all on their way home, I've set about getting the float up and putting some more bait in, ready for the weekend session. As I only had two nights at my disposal, I decided not to go as heavy as I had done the week before. I went in with about six kilos. Same mix as before, the corn, the maize, the hemp, the pellet, and the boily. Spread it around the float, and again, all three rods on 360 rigs on the bait. What I decided to do this time though was to fish all three rigs on exactly the same hook bait. The week before I'd had three of my four bites on the Ester Fruit Cream, the orangey coloured pop-up. So I decided that all three rods were going on that, that colour this week. So out they went, um, onto the money at uh, sort of 90 yards range. Um, and yeah, the conditions were absolutely epic. The wind started to hammer into that bank. 
we've got some light drizzle. We'd gone from like 20, sorry, from 39 degrees down to sort of 21 degrees. We had like an 18 degree swing in 24 hours. It was crazy. The pressure dropped and you felt sure that something had to happen. One of the reasons why I picked that swim, like I said, I knew from previous seasons fishing this lake that on a big southwesterly wind, it comes into its own. The August, the year before, I actually caught my biggest fish that I've had from this lake, uh, a fish called Rollies. It's an absolute mint, big plated scales, uh, just under 40 pounds. Um, one of my all time favorite fish that I've ever caught. Um, and that came in a, in a hit of fish, like I say, in the summer when the pressure dropped and a big southwesterly wind sprung up. So I sat in that peg that Friday night thinking, this is gonna happen. You know, this, is, this has gotta be deja vu written all over it. The conditions are that good. I woke up the Saturday morning, nothing's happened. Again, not too disheartened at this time because it is a daytime area where, I, where I'm fishing. The morning's worn on, nothing. We get to lunchtime, still nothing, and I'm starting to get a bit twitchy. The wind's getting stronger and stronger all the time. I've decided to redo the rods just in case, for whatever reason, all three had gone out tangled, although I knew in my head that that wasn't the case. You do these things as an angler, you get paranoid. So, cranked them in and I've put them back out. Now, it's only a 90 yard cast, not the biggest of casts, but I was using my 13 foot X5s in the three and a half pound test, coupled with a tapered Exocet line and the 12,000 EOS reels. Maybe a little bit overgunned for fishing 90 yards, but when you've got massive west southwesterly winds blowing straight into your face uh, and, a, and a lake uh, where the rules allow only a three and a half ounce maximum size of lead, you really do need that, uh, or I do anyway, I need that kind of extra power to make sure I can get my rigs back out on the baited area, even when it's blowing a hooligan. It's got to about 6 p.m. on that Saturday and finally, I've received a bite and it was a massive relief, I can tell you, because I've been on the phone to a few of my mates saying, I can't believe I am not catching fish in these conditions. Um, but finally that bite's come um, and I've managed to land a lovely common. Uh, low 20, uh, it's my first common of the season, so that was nice. Um, and yeah, it was, it was nailed. Um, so it was a really good, Sort of indicator that the fish were feeding hard on that bait the hook hole was so good so i woke early on the sunday morning to motionless bobbins again wasn't too disappointed because it just doesn't seem to do night bites that swim um and yeah as the morning went on i thought my best chance would be sort of mid-morning until sort of six seven o'clock when i caught the fish the day before um and that gut instinct proved really right because things changed in my session big style. Well, what a bit of final morning chaos. Got a small common in the retainer. There's a small common in there, in that net. And in this net, there's a chunky mirror that might scrape 30 pound. Literally two bites at once, chuck the rods back out and then the rod's gone again. Mental. So I'd actually had three commons on the bounce, which was very rare for that lake because the mirrors outweigh the commons by a big number. But the third fish in that flurry of action that I had turned out to be a mirror. Normal service was resumed and it was a lovely mirror, 28 pounder. Um, and yeah, I'd sort of gone from zero to hero in the space of, of 40 minutes with, with those three quick bites. Um, and I was, as you can imagine, really keen to sit it out as long as I could on that Sunday. I let Abby know that I wasn't gonna be coming home too early. I planned to fish at least until six o'clock when I'd had the bite the day before. Around four o'clock that afternoon, one of the rods was away again, and I landed my first 30 of the new season. 30 pound, 10 ounce, a lovely mirror. Um, and yeah, the, the session was just getting better and better. And the fish were getting bigger and bigger. 
So I carried on uh, until sort of six o'clock and I had another bite, sort of similar time to the day before, and that turned out to be another good high 20 mirror. So that was my fifth fish of the day um, and, and my sixth of the weekend. Um, I only wish that all that action and the weather had come a few days earlier because we would have got an incredible guest sessions with me and Bart being able to fish in those conditions and getting that kind of action. But I was coming back from the lake so charged up and so happy, the, uh, the bad fishing at the start of the session was a distant memory. So that crazy session actually turned out to be my last one for a few weeks on that particular lake. I had other plans for the forthcoming few weeks. One of those plans was um, a six night holiday to Mustang Lake in Norfolk. I'd actually booked this trip two years ago. It's a, it's a venue that's run on an exclusive lake booking um, and it took me two years ahead to actually secure a spot on the lake, such as the popularity of it. The plan was uh, for myself and some of my good fishing mates to spend the week down there. Uh, some of the guys were going to spend all week and then other guys were going to do two or three nights and then some new guys were going to come and replace them and do two or three nights. So um, yeah, it was something I'd been looking forward to for a long, long time. Um, and as it got nearer and nearer, I was just getting more and more excited. Um, and before I knew it, um, those, that, that trip had, had come upon us uh, and the weather forecast for it was looking really, really good. Before I could actually uh, go to Mustang, I had a social engagement the weekend before, and that was a uh, wedding reception again, this time down in Surrey. Uh, it was for the son of one of my really good mates, Gary Patterson, his son, Billy, who was marrying the beautiful Paige. Myself and Abby traveled down, um, as did Scott and his missus, who I work with, uh, and we were going to the reception. Uh, and Gary actually was coming on the Mustang trip with me a couple of days later. Uh, but I must admit, I wasn't sure if he was going to make it. Having watched him busting his moves on the dance floor on that Saturday night, I wasn't sure if the old boy was going to have enough energy left to do a six night session on the bank. So it was going to be a bit interesting to see if he managed to turn up on that Monday morning for Mustang. So before I knew it, it was Monday morning, the 5th of August, uh, and I was loading my van up, ready to travel down to Norfolk. My good mate, Tony from Oldham, he'd stayed at my house on the Sunday night. So we loaded the van on the Monday morning and the pair of us traveled down together. We uh, met up at a cafe in a place called Dis, a lovely little place in Norfolk. Um, there was gonna be four of us fishing the first 48 hours. There was myself, Tony, Gary P, and my good mate Jimmy Armstrong as well. So we all met up at the cafe, had a brilliant slap up full English breakfast, and then we headed away over to Mustang. We met up with Rich, the uh, lake owner, who's also a Fox consultant, so it's great to see him and have a catch up. And he gave us a lovely tour of the lake. And whilst we were walking around the lake, we saw a few fish showing in certain areas, um, and we was all in our heads starting to think where we'd like to be for the start of that session. We made a draw for swims, Tony came out first, he picked peg six. Then Gary P came out, he went in peg 13. A little bit iffy that if you're superstitious. I was then next out, I went for peg 12, which is next door to Gary. I wanted to fish next to him and have a good social with him. Um, and then last out was Jimmy, and he ended up in peg two, which is right outside the car park, right next to the barbecue, um, but also a very good peg. So we were all happy with our swim choices. Um, and as you do, we set about getting all of our gear into the swims. Because I had Piper with me for six nights, I had a lot of gear to get round to my peg and I decided to use my Easy Dome two-man bivvy. Um, I knew I wasn't likely to be moving swims, so the big comfortable bivvy sort of brought the kitchen sink, so to speak, gave the dog plenty of room and, and comfort too. Um, so I've got all the gear set up, um, and I also decided for this session uh, to take me old Jolly Roger with me. And that's a bait boat for those of you that aren't familiar with the term. So very controversial piece of equipment in cart fishing, but uh, I like to use one when I'm on a holiday. 
friend of mine, uh, Ian, I won't say his surname from up north, he once said to me many years ago that the people who use bait boats are either shit or desperate or both. Well, Ian, let's just say I was desperate to have a very good holiday that week, so I was taking it with me. So I've got the old echo sounder fitted on the boat and because of the swim I'd picked actually had fish showing in it when I was setting up, I decided my first port of call would be to just drive out a rig with a uh, couple of handfuls of boilies in the back of the boat and just drop it on showing fish. So I started doing that, but uh, um, um, yeah, I'd done that on two rods and then the third rod I just dropped uh, on a spot that I'd caught from a few years ago when I'd fished the lake before. So I've put these two rods uh, onto showing fish and actually as I've just clipped on the bobbin of dropping a rod on a showing fish, the rod's ripped off in my hand and I was into a fish straight away. It was brilliant. Unfortunately, 15 seconds later, the hook pulled and I was skipping my rig across the surface. I was a bit down, but also I thought, you know what? What a great start. If, if I've had a bite this quick, surely there's going to be more to come. Rigs that I'd decided to start off with um, were fluorocarbon 20 pound illusion, fish D rig style with a size four stiff rig beak hook. And then the hook bait was an 18 mil triple X hardened bottom bait with a 14 mil orange ester fruit cream topper. Reason for such a big hook bait um, and such a sort of hard hook bait because we were told before we arrived that there's quite a lot of roach in the venue and they can be very ravenous. So we didn't want to be using small baits or soft baits. So the rest of that evening sort of went by in a bit of a blur. It's been a really long day uh, and I think we all ended up having an early night. Woke up on the Tuesday morning to a phone call from Jimmy to tell me that he had uh, his first fish and indeed the party's first fish of the trip. So I've gone round with the camera to get some footage of it um, and it was a lovely 30 pound mirror. Jimmy, as you can imagine, was really pleased um, and it was a great start to our week's fishing. <laughs> That'll do Louis, won't it mate? A couple of hours later and it was Tony's turn to get in on the action. He'd received himself his first bite of the trip and he followed in Jimmy's footsteps and duly landed a 30 pound Mustang mirror. It had been a great start to our trip, two fish on the bank and both 30 pounders. As the day went on, I was getting more and more frustrated because I reckon by early afternoon I'd had 60 odd fish show all around my peg. The wind was hacking into there, uh, it looked cock on, but I could not get a bite. Um, and looking back on it now, I, I, I made some mistakes, you know. I decided to chase the fish about. Fish was showing and I was dropping bait boat with a few uh, boilies in. I was using a mixture. I had 10 mil, 15 mil and 18 mil glugged up triple X and then some barrel shaped triple X as well. The lake's boilie only, so I decided to mix up the sizes and shapes um, to try and give myself a little bit of an edge over just using one size and shape. Um, but I kept putting in a good couple of handfuls. Problem with a bait boat is it's easy to put a lot of bait in. So I was putting a couple of handfuls in, putting a rig in, and I was dropping it on a shower, dropping it on a shower, dropping it on a shower. And as that day went on, you know, I was putting piles of bait all over my peg, and that's really not a good thing to do. And I call it a schoolboy error, really, as I'm looking back. Um, so I decided, uh, because by the Wednesday morning, I said, if I haven't had anything, I'm just going to pick three spots and I'm going to just fish them for the rest of the week. I can't keep chasing the fish about. So Wednesday morning comes uh, and as per the day before, I get a phone call early doors off Jimmy to say he'd had another fish. Um, that turned out to be a low 20, another real stunning Mustang fish. And again, as the pattern from the day before, next person to get off the mark for the day was Tony. Now, Tony had actually moved swim after he put back his 30 pounder. So he'd been in peg six originally, caught a 30 pounder, but then he decided to move onto the bank adjoining uh, where he was, which was peg, peg eight. That bank hadn't had any anglers on it up until then. The reason he decided to move there was because the wind was predominantly going to be blowing onto that bank throughout our stay, and there was more anglers due to turn up. Uh, the, the next day and he felt that his best shout was to be in peg eight. So a very bold move by Tony to move swims having just put back a 30 pounder. But as I say, the next day he was rewarded with another 30 pounder. 
So a great tactical decision there from Tony. And as the week went on, it proved to be an absolute worldie of a tactical decision, but more of that later. The weather for that Wednesday was hot. It was mid to high 20s, and I felt sure the fish would be moving around the island. So one rod went there. One rod went to the spot where I'd had the hook pull from at the start of the week. And then the other went uh, down in the corner on a spot that Rich, the owner, said was a, was a good bet for a big one. So I've persevered with that. Um, and that tactical change proved to be a good one because around about, I think it was half 12 on Wednesday, I got my first fish of the trip, a 32 pound, 14 ounce mirror, an absolute belter as well. It rucked like mad. Um, and I must admit, you know, my knees were knocking as I was playing this fish. Um, I really wanted to catch one and uh, yeah, I got it in the net and there was this whole weight lifted off my shoulders. Um, and upon expecting the hook hold on the mat, it was absolutely nailed. That D-rig was right back in exactly where you'd want it. Perfect hook hold. And just goes to show that the hook pull I'd had a couple of days before on exactly the same setup was just a bit of bad luck. Um, in fact, things on, on the Wednesday really started to look up for me because um, something I haven't mentioned yet um, is on the Tuesday, uh, night, evening, my dog Piper decided to nail a whole tub of 18mm hard triple X hook baits and a whole tub of 14mm ester fruit cream orange pop-ups. I left her unattended for five minutes whilst I baited up a margin spot by hand. I put the lids on the pop-ups by hand, screwed them on. She's knocked both lids off and she has nailed every single hook bait. I've walked into the swim and I've gone mad. I've shouted at her, told her to get on her bed. She's looked really sheepish and I was fuming. I didn't want to talk to any of the lads. They kept trying to talk to me. I was just, I was so angry. Another train, constant. Um, I was so angry. Originally, initially I was angry with a dog, um, but it wasn't the dog's fault. She's a puppy. She doesn't know that that's not food. Um, and actually I turned my anger to myself. I was just, I just, I knew I shouldn't have left those lids like that. I should have screwed them on. And I just, I was just so annoyed. Like the, they were my main hook baits of choice. I wanted to fish those snowman rigs and now I ain't got any hook baits left. Um, thankfully, Jimmy works for CC Moore. So he managed to sort me out some hook baits. Um, but so the Wednesday afternoons come and the dog has started to poo. <laughs> orange pop-ups and triple X boilies. Now I've spent the best part of nearly 24 hours paranoid that are these baits going to hurt the dog? Is she going to be able to pass them? Um, she hadn't been sick. She hadn't had a poo. I was getting a little bit nervous, but thankfully not long after I'd had my first uh, fish on the bank, she'd got uh, some hook baits passed through and uh, things were really starting to look up. I've never been so excited to see dog poo in all my life. And I hope I'm never that excited ever again. By now, Jimmy had left the lake and Essex's favourite carp angler, Steve Spurgeon, had turned up. Now, Steve was originally supposed to be starting with us on the Monday. Uh, he only had two years notice about what the date was, but he got it wrong. <laughs> Ended up going shark fishing in Cornwall for the start of the week. But he finally turned up on the Wednesday and took over peg two from Jimmy. Jimmy had had two fish in two days. It made sense for Steve to drop in that peg. It also made sense for Steve to find out how many wraps on what tree Jimmy had caught his fish from and straight away Steve's Jolly Roger was dropping one of his rigs straight on the money what, on the spot what Jimmy had caught two fish from. So Steve had turned up and gone in there and then a bit later on that day Rob O'Brien, another one of the lads, he turned up as well um, for his to start his session and he decided to go in peg six which is the swim that Tony had left. Now. Rob's a bit of a demon on the barbecue, so I was really pleased that he'd turned up. Obviously, he's great company, but he also cooks awesome food. But as he was busy sorting his rods out on that Wednesday evening, Spurge decided to do the barbecue. And i tell you what, as a deputy to Rob on the barbie, old Spurge didn't do a bad job. We ate, we ate really well that night. We had a few ciders uh, and we all had a real good crack. Things were looking really good for the rest of the session. And I woke up on Thursday morning to a phone call from Spurge tell me that he'd followed in Jimmy's footsteps by catching one at first light on that banker spot. And he told me it was a weldy. So I was round there like a shot and he didn't disappoint. 35 pound of 
big plated scale linear. I'd probably say, having looked at the pictures of the fish in the lake, probably the best big one in the lake. So well done, Spurge. It was an absolute worldie. Um, and yeah, a great start to his session. I went back to my swim and I decided to make a tactical decision to try and help Gary P get off the mark. At this stage, he hasn't had a fish. He's been there since the Monday and I could tell he was starting to get a little bit down. You know, everybody else is catching, he hasn't had a bite. So I've decided just before the bite time from, the, from my bite time on the day before, I've decided to reel my rods in and go for a shower. I helped Gaz position one of his rods about 10 yards away from where I'd caught from on that shelf of the island. And I hoped that with my rods reeled in and less pressure on the island, if those fish came around and fed at a similar time to the day before, that Gaz could get off the mark. So I've gone and had my shower. And as I've walked out from around the shower block and back onto the, onto the track of the lake, I've looked over and Gal's giving it the big one. Spurge is in the swim with him um, and Tony was in the swim and the guys were all buzzing. I've got around there, Gal's got a massive smile on his face. He's had a 20 pounder, he's off the mark. Um, and it was, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Uh, the tactical decision had paid off. Gal had uh, come up with a rig and a bait combination that the fish liked and yeah smiles all round so well done Gaz brilliant that evening my good mate Lee Butcher turned up he was coming to fish uh, the Thursday night through until the Sunday he dropped in peg free which was up to the left of where Spurge was um, and despite him effectively getting last pick of swims Rich the owner said that peg free is actually one of the better pegs on the lake uh, and the fact that it hadn't been fished all week Rich felt sure that there'd be a good fish or two to be had for Lee. Um, being the good friend I am, I went and helped Lee get his rods out. I drove my bait boat for him and uh, dropped the rigs where he wanted them to be dropped. And whilst I was doing that, uh, Rob, the barbecue king, was cooking us up a right feast, which included my all-time favourite, a rack of barbecue spare ribs. Um, so with Lee's rods out and fishing, we retreated and joined the other lads at the barbecue area. Again, we had a few nice ciders and a couple of beers, ate like kings, had a real good laugh together um, before getting back to our swims and getting our rods out for the night ahead. Anyway, I got the rods out, got to bed, and yeah, hoped to get woken up by the alarm. Sadly, it wasn't the bite alarm that woke me up. Um, it was my phone. I think it was about half past two in the morning. Lee Butcher's decided to ring me. Uh, saying that he'd got a fish and it was a real belter um, but his batteries were dead in his scales so could I bring my scales along with my camera so I'm not the best at getting woken up uh, in the middle of the night so I think I was a bit groggy but I've gone around there with the scales and the camera um, and yeah Lee had, uh, <laughs> had uh, landed an absolute belter 34 pound zip linear um, he was really happy. I think if I'd been awake a bit longer, I'd have been as happy as he was. But all I wanted to do was get the photos done and get back in bed. Got up about six, seven o'clock the next morning. Uh, the swim was looking dead. There, were, there was no fish showing in front of me anymore. Um, the sort of day went by pretty uneventful for all of us until sort of mid afternoon when Rob finally got off the mark. Um, he was on the phone, oh, I've got a 30 pound common, gone around there to film it, turned out it was a 27 pound common um, and Rob had, had overestimated the size and according to his missus he does that quite often. So yeah, we've, we've uh, set about filming it um, and yeah, I think Rob decided that this was going to start to be called the Rob Dog Vlog, but he was wrong. Here we are, my first fish, had to wait. What are you talking for? Have you not got volume on? No chance, I'll be f***ing <laughs> voicing over this, this is just be a cutaway. He wants to be star of the yeah. show. <laughs> I'll be saying my mate Rob finally got off the mark. <laughs> so after Rob had returned that fish, it wasn't long at all before I was in Tony's swim, filming him play a really big fish. Uh, it was all a bit tense because we'd seen it show and we knew it was a good fish as he was playing it and uh, yeah. On the scales, that fish went just under 40 pound. It was one of the A team, bit down after spawning. Um, and yeah, what a great result for Tony having had a little period where he hadn't had any action. Um, so yeah, 
it was, you know, turning out to be a fantastic trip. All seven people that had been to the lake had caught fish. Tony had had a 39 pounder now. And yeah, we were just having a really good time and enjoying each other's company. I've decided it's about time I give one of these pop-up rigs a go. So I've pulled in my middle rod, which was the rod that I'd lost a fish on on the Monday when we first got to the lake. And I decided to put a little uh, Northern Special white pop-up on my little reverse combi rig. Some triple X boilies in the back, not a lot, 20 bait, something like that. I decided to really uh, drop back the amount of bait I was putting out because I'd put so much in already in the week. Um, and I drove it out and dropped it and it was about two or three rod lengths off of the margin of peg 10. And the wind was, like I say, hammering down there um, and yeah, it looked good. A um, few hours having after doing that, uh, actually received a really twitchy occurrence on that rod. The bobbin whacked up to the top, the tips smacked round, it sprung back, the bobbin landed slack in the water um, and I wound in with no five ounce lead on. It was obvious I'd been done by a carp. Um, yeah, how I managed to get done I do not know, but you know, these fish are pressured fish. Put a fresh rig on, put a fresh lead on, another 20 baits in the boat and I dropped it back on the same spot. Uh, and yeah, 10 or 15 minutes later, that rod signaled a bite. Um, and yeah, I was, I was into a fish. It, the wind at this stage was now howling from left to right. I've had to go out in, in my waders to, to play the fish because I've got big reed beds either side of the swim. And yeah, as I'm out in the water, the, the, it was really hard with the side wind blowing on my line. I had a big buzz and playing the fish and I'm paranoid that it's not gonna, you know, it's gonna fall off and that. But thankfully it was well nailed and I soon had it in the net. It was a lovely 20 pound common, um, bit of a rare one apparently according to, to Rich. Um, and that was probably, I don't know, about 6 p.m. Uh, by that stage when I'd caught that fish. With that fish returned, it was time to get back up to the barbecue area and enjoy Rob's cooking once again and another rack of ribs. Whilst we were enjoying the barbecue, Spurge actually got a bite. He had to uh, leave the food, go cold, and he managed to land another 30 pounder. Um, and it was really good to, uh, to see Essex's legend in action playing the fish and landing it like an old pro. During dinner, I'd come up with a bit of a plan that I'd mentioned to Gary P about something that I thought that, might, that we could do that might get us both a better chance of catching a fish on the Saturday. So that plan involved me moving my rods and my reels and everything round to peg 10 just for a day session and fishing short from that bank. So all three rods, literally two or three rod, rod lengths out. That would allow Gary to fish two rods over to the island where I was no longer putting lines across. And I hope that by having less lines around the island, Gary had a better chance of catching. And by me fishing round on peg 10, really close in with hardly any line in the water with a wind forecast to be getting even stronger down that way, I would have a better chance. I think it was about 10 a.m. on that Saturday morning. I'd reeled in, gone and had a shower, and then set about fishing out of peg 10. Um, I used all three rods on these little combi rig pop-ups. And yeah, it was a little bit crazy to do it, to be honest with you. To go on the end of 50 mile an hour wind with no shelter, uh, it was hardcore. And I'm not sure Piper was that impressed with my decision to take her around there. Uh, but together we sort of huddled up on the chair and tried to get a bit of cover behind the reeds as best we could. Um, but thankfully that decision to do that day session paid off because mid-afternoon I received another bite and this time I landed an absolute belter. Well, the, uh, the crazy, or some, some would say a crazy move right onto the end of that gale force 50 mile an hour wind has paid off, look at that, for an absolutely stunning cup. 29 pound, three ounces, absolutely blown away. And uh, yeah, definitely made that move, that move this morning worthwhile. Happy days. So not long after I put my fish back, Tony was in again, and what a session he was having. This time he'd landed himself a 36 pound common. A beautiful long fish, uh, that was his fourth bite of the trip and his fourth 30 pounder. Absolutely unbelievable. 
And I think a little while later on that day, it got even better for Tony as he landed his fifth fish of the trip and his fifth 30 pounder from Mustang. Absolutely incredible session he'd had. And that move to go from peg six to peg eight on that end of that wind, what a great decision that was. That fish for Tony actually turned out to be the last of the trip for the whole party. But what an awesome trip it had been. We'd put 15 carp on the bank between us and 10 of them were 30 pounders. I can't really speak highly enough of Mustang, the facilities, the stock. Rich, the owner, is so accommodating. All the guys that I fished with during that week, there was no bad blood, there was no ill feeling. Everybody got on like a house on fire, even though a lot of these lads had never ever met each other before. Um, and I really cannot wait to do it all again next year. It's been a fantastic last few weeks in my fishing. I've caught some great fish. My mojo's really back. Uh, I'm loving life. I'm loving fishing. Um, and yeah, I'm just hoping over the next coming weeks I can get out on the bank plenty and hopefully show you some more fish in episode five.